Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, the dorky talking black guy that's just trying to get by, and welcome to another edition of Street Fighter Flashbacks. In celebration of the 30 year anniversary of Street Fighter, I'm taking it upon myself to share my memories of the arcade games at that moment in time, and as well review other Street Fighter related content. Well, you know what? We're at the final chapter of my Street Fighter 2 review, and you know, so I've already went over my intro to the World Warriors, and then I went into going into more detail of basically, you know, uh, World Warrior Championship Edition and Turbo. Uh, so we know what's next, or you should know what's next if you're a Street Fighter fan. Super Street Fighter 2. Now the thing was, for me personally at this time, this is when fighting games were reaching their peak. There was a lot more competition out there. And, you know, most of the games weren't really competing that well with Street Fighter and everything. But still, me personally as a fan, I started seeing other fighting games coming out and they start to progress. So I was expecting Street Fighter to progress. But instead, they kept the same formula, but they made things fresh by introducing four new characters. They introduced, you know, T-Hawk, uh, a Mexican, uh, a huge Mexican fighter and everything, who moved as slow as Zangief, but to be honest, I was not really a huge fan of. And then they incorporated DJ, you know, who is very much inspired by Billy Blanks. And, you know, I'll be honest, like, I found him kind of unappealing and overtly stereotypical as like, you know, basically stereotypical, but not in a negative sense, like, you know, like M. Bison was and everything, more of like, you know, the upbeat, happy-go-lucky, but like still kind of buffoonerish and everything. However, I will admit that some of his moveset was pretty cool. I just couldn't pull them all off and everything, you know. And then we ended up with, like, you know, my favorite of the new characters, Fei Long and everything. Now, Fei Long was clearly a Bruce Lee clone, you know, who's basically trying to test his abilities. But at the same time, you know, while his moveset was a bit limited, it was still fun, you know, see, Especially with his, like, you know, flying flaming kick, which was the Shen Kyaku and everything. And basically, his triple punch, you know? And despite that, those limiting moves that he had, he was still very fun to play with and, like, basically my personal favorite. But the breakout of the new characters is Super Street Fighter 2 and my old sporting partner's favorite female character, Cammy. And, alright guys, let's, let's be up front. The first thing everybody noticed about Cammy back in the day was her ass and everything. Like because like she had this like this bathing suit one piece like jumpsuit and everything and every time like she had most of her victory poses, most of them and everything, they revolved around her like turning her posterior around so you could see her ass. Hey, I remember my mom saying that when she turned around to display her ass in a victory pose, she was like, "Ugh, that little huzzy and everything, you know. But I will admit, Cammy herself as a character had some very interesting moves. Like, you know, she had the cannon drill, which I thought was awesome. And then, you know, cannon strike. And then basically, you know, which was basically her anti-air move, which still to this day, like, even though I was able to learn how to pull it off, I'm like... How was that countering the air exactly? Like, I know it's a jump, it's a rising back kick, you know, but damn, I'm like, you know, basically it's like spike kick, spike kick, and I'm like, damn, like knocking me out the air right there, you know, it was kind of, you know, Cammy was kind of difficult to play against her AI, but then, you know, that was at first, you know. But not only did they introduce four new characters in Super Street Fighter, they actually kind of changed the graphics and the way the characters look to a degree, you know. And I gotta say, it was both a negative and a positive, you know. Now, I'm no animation expert, nor am I, like, you know, uh, 
an animation snob, but I will say this, like, basically, the drawings of the characters in their profiles or the character select screen, they were vast improvements. They looked awesome and everything. But then when you got to play them, some of them were hit and miss. Some of them were improved. The improvements were basically Zangief, Blanca, and Guile. And, oh no, Zangief, Blanca, Guile, and Dalsim. And some of them were pretty much misses. Like Chun Li and E Honda. And, uh, um, <clears throat> and. To a degree, Sagat and all. But everyone else was meh, meh, and everything. One thing that was cool, though, is like, you know, this is where we introduced the you. This is where we started to see the huge difference between Dew and Ken and their perspective moves. You know, Ken had the flaming um, Shoryuken and everything, which was definitely solidified me using Ken a lot more. And then Dew's Hadouken was a lot bigger, you know. So, Super Street Fighter 2 in the arcades, I remember playing it there. And, you know, it didn't get me as hyped as I would expect it. it I really, like, you know, I, I took it like meh and everything. Because at that time, you know, I kind of moved on to other fighting games, you know. Which I'll explain those games in the future. But then, you know... When Super Street Fighter 2 came out, you know, I immediately noticed that basically, like, something was a little different, you know. The music was a little bit different, you know. The opening intro with Dew, they added more animation captures, which I actually thought was interesting. Because with the whole silhouette of Dew in, in the dark at first, and the lightning crashing, and you get to see him a little bit clearer, that was cool in Super Street Fighter. But then in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, you had that same intro, but then you had an animation of, like, Chun-Li appearing, and then Cammy in the forefront, and then right when, like, you know, you're in, like, you know, the, the direct central view of Cammy and everything, Cammy basically, like, you know, <clears throat> she sticks her tongue at you. She's like, you know, it's like, ding, 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 ding. No, no, that's the Super Street Fighter 2 intro. It's... And then Cammy just goes like, and I was like, oh, okay, they're going there. They're going there. Oh, okay. But then afterwards, you get the silhouette of another fighter. You know, someone like clearly of Japanese descent, but he looks darker. He looks kind of, he has this, he had this like appearance of something evil with him. And that character became. The legendary introduction of Goki. Oh, man. I remember when I finally got up to, like, you know, Vega and all. And then, basically, uh, I forgot how I did it. I still forget to this day how I did it. But I got up to Vega using both Dew, Ken, Chun-Li, and, um, and Fei Long. And Sadat, of course. And then, basically, next thing I know, like, you know, about to fight Vega... Goki comes out, like, and then you just hear, psh, 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 and then you're fighting this dude who has a black karate gi and everything, and then you see just Vega, like, in the middle of the floor, which I'm like, damn, they're going to do Vega like that? He's, like, up in the middle of the floor, laid out and everything, while you're still fighting this dude who has the same moveset of Dio and Ken, only much cooler, and he's a lot faster. He has this mid-air diving diving sidekick, he does Hadoukens in the air and everything, you know, and I forgot to mention this in, like, you know, Street Fighter 2 Turbo and on, but then, you know, he also does the Tatsumaki Senbukyaku in the air a lot faster than Ken did, you know, because in Super Street Fighter 2, you had Ken doing that move in the air. Speaking about you and Ken, this is where we get the, uh, we start getting more of what the series is known as Shotokan fighters. While Dew and Ken's, you know, fighting style is the um, Asas, um, what you call them? Asasuken, you know, you know, which is translates to Assassin's Fist. You know, this at the time they were still calling Dew and Ken Shotokan stylists. You know, and basically you start to see this more so. And this was the 
clear separation of the two because Du and Ken's moveset were different. Ken executed more kicks. You know, he executed a roundhouse kick, a high roundhouse kick, a medium roundhouse kick, and that was it. He didn't really have the spinning hook kick. Well, he did have a spinning hook kick in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, but it was hard to pull off, you know. But that was the last time you really saw Ken using a spinning hook kick. While Dew's uh, moveset remained the same, as well as Goki's. But those are my memories of Super Street Fighter and Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Do you have your own memories? Drop them in the comment below. Subscribe. Give this video a like. And ring that bell so you know when a new video loads. But until then, this is Token Dave, the dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by, and I'll catch you guys later.